Good morning. Um, before we start deriving the uh, wave equation, let me first explain uh, essentially what we want to do. If you have some sort of a, a sound source, let's say here's a Wankel engine of some sort rotating and making, generating noise. And uh, that will start radiating sounds as uh, shown with the sound waves around the engine. And it will have different intensity in different directions. It may radiate sound more intensely here than perhaps here. Okay? And in general, when you have a small source, it will radiate uh, according to the geometry, actually for any source. And as these sound waves propagate, go into distance, farther away from the source, they become plane waves. See, very near the source, they follow the geometry of the source itself. If the source is a cylinder, for example, like this, it will radiate in a cylindrical fashion. In complicated geometries, we'll have similarly complicated radiation patterns. And as you go away from any source, it will become a plane wave. Now, this is important because this is why we study plane waves intensely. Okay? And as the sound waves propagate, for example, they start interacting with different types of geometries. When the sound waves interact with, say, a cube like this, now it will start reflecting, refracting, uh, scattering. Okay? If it's a small object, it will start scattering. And as the waves continue, they will interact with a solid wall here. And some of the waves will reflect back. Some will be transmitted. And some will be absorbed. So what we have here then are three different components. We have what's called radiation. Propagation and interaction. I'll say with structures. Okay. Now, what is important here? There are several things important. One, we have a source. We have a medium. And we have boundaries. OK? <laughs> so I said in the source, the geometry defines the coordinates, okay? So geometry defines the coordinates that you want to use. The medium, of course, can be a free medium or what we would call free field meaning open air, atmosphere, or if you are in the ocean, just uh, open ocean, you would have uh, perhaps uh, density fluctuations. In the air due to uh, thermal gradients or in the water 
in the deep seas, uh, different temperatures, again, thermal gradients, change the speed of sound. <laughs> and you, you might have waveguides, and I'll explain what that is in just a moment. Waveguides would be, I would put it, for example, in the medium. <laughs> They're like ducts, pipes, as sound enters, propagates through it, and goes to, for instance, from one room to the next room. Okay, these are waveguides. And we will study sound propagation through waveguides as well. As you see in all of these, boundary conditions and geometry define which coordinate systems we should use. Okay? And so this is the general uh, kind of an overview of what this course is all about. <laughs> and we will start to begin with, with waves because waves are the fundamental elements of acoustics propagation. Okay? Now, two things to be aware of. There are two types of velocities in a fluid. Okay? One is the uh, particle velocity. That would be in the medium. And the other one would be the propagation speed. That would be the wave speed, the acoustic speed. <laughs> so these are two different things. Now, when a sound wave goes through the medium, okay, when a sound wave goes through the medium, it's a pressure disturbance. So the way we express total pressure is the ambient pressure hydrostatic pressure, P0, when there is no disturbance, plus the pressure disturbance. Well, this would be the disturbance <clears throat> or acoustic pressure. This is a capital P, sorry, total pressure. Okay, so as a pressure wave goes through the medium, of course, as a result of uh, its effect on the uh, pressure on the medium, the, uh, this, the um, density will also propagate, uh, will fluctuate. So similarly, density. and particle velocity. Do you understand or do you know what I mean by particle velocity? <laughs> when you have, just think about, just for a moment, um, Think about a, a calm water in, 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 on a lake, for instance. And if you drop a stone, waves 
will start radiating on the surface of the, uh, of the water. In this case, if you put a little cork on the water, okay, as, as these waves propagate out, the cork will go up and down. Okay? That motion of the cork is very similar to what I mean by particle velocity. <laughs> so if you have a tube and you have sound waves that are going through it, okay? and if you have a little styrofoam particle, we can actually demonstrate this in the laboratory, <laughs> but uh, the uh, particle here will oscillate back and forth rather than move out. If there's a flow, air flow, then it will move. And air flow would be, for example, due to something like this, okay? But the fluctuation that's over the air flow will just make it go back and forth. And that's what we call the particle velocity, <laughs> okay? And yes, and uh, velocity is a vector quantity as opposed to pressure, which is a scalar quantity. Okay, so scalar and vector. Now what we do is we use um, density fluctuations We're interested in particle displacement. And pressure fluctuations. These are the three quantities. If I just go back here for a moment, do you, sorry. U is d, dt, and xi here is a displacement. So what, we're, what we are really considering are these three quantities, okay? <laughs> Pressure, uh, density fluctuation, and particle velocity or displacement. So <laughs> these, three, these three quantities we use First of all, the continuity equation. That ties density of fluctuations to the particle velocity. Okay. And then we'll use Newton's law. to relate pressure fluctuations to particle displacement. And we'll use the gas law to tie density fluctuations to pressure fluctuations. <laughs> In the next uh, maybe five, 10 minutes, this is what we're going to do. See, using these uh, three different uh, uh, relationships establish the uh, wave equation based on these principles. Okay. Can you read my writing? Okay. I'll try to write slower. <laughs> All right. Now, let's first start with the uh, equation of state, or we would call that the gas law also. <laughs> OK? <sighs> 
As you know, in a gas or a fluid, molecules are always running around and bouncing off each other, but we do not consider these. Instead, we consider the average quantities uh, through thermodynamic properties, such as pressure, density, and uh, temperature. The uh, one law that we do follow is for adiabatic conditions, <laughs> what this means is <laughs> when the gas is compressed and rarefacted as pressure moves, it doesn't have enough time, even at very low frequencies, to equalize its uh, uh, temperature change with the surrounding. That's called an adiabatic condition. So there's no heat or energy exchange with the surrounding during the uh, sound waves, either propagation or uh, development. <laughs> and under these conditions, we have a relationship that describes uh, be, uh, between pressure and volume <laughs> constant, but volume to the power gamma, and gamma is the uh, ratio of the uh, uh, specific heat at constant pressure to specific heat at constant volume. And at standard temperature and pressure, gamma is 1.4 for air. <laughs> okay? So this is the law from which we start. That can also be written as okay, <laughs> ratios of two pressure and two uh, density states, okay. <laughs> Now, what I will do is look at the uh, uh, numerator and subtract and add row zero from it without changing its value. And uh, simplify that expression as 1 plus s uh, to the uh, uh, gamma power. S here called condensation. Oops. What that means is it's the relative change, okay, relative change in density due to a pressure change. Okay. Now, if I take this equation here, the pressure ratio, and uh, rewrite it, and expand it using Taylor series. And the pressure is expressed as one gamma S plus gamma, gamma minus one S square and, and the higher order terms. If we neglect, because they are so small, neglect the higher order terms, then we can write You have a question. Go ahead. Well, I think that there is a mistake in the equation. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right, P is equal to P zero and 
parentheses. That's oh, this is S, of course, sorry. <laughs> yes, but the rest are okay. Yeah, it's S, thank you. Yes, one plus S to the gamma power. Okay, what is uh, P minus P zero? Do you remember from just a moment ago? Yes, <laughs> if you remember from a little earlier, P is the total pressure, P0 is the atmospheric or stat hydrostatic pressure, and small p is the uh, acoustic pressure, the fluctuation. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the fluctuation expressed in terms of gamma P0 and S. Gamma times P0 is what we would call the bulk modulus of gas fluid of the medium. And remembering from above where S is equal to the density change divided by the total density, we can actually write it, let me just rewrite it again. If you remember rho, rho zero, okay. We had defined, just going back to your notes a second ago, the density change is delta Total density is the ambient density and the density fluctuation. Okay, so this can be written in this manner. So substituting back here, we are able to write the pressure as gamma P sub zero, rho sub zero, and delta. Now, the numerator we said is bulk modulus, the denominator is density, okay? And that ratio is the square of the speed of sound, okay? Mm -hmm. So, Now, bulk modulus is analogous to Young's modulus, okay? It, it is a stiffness property of the air. So its inverse would be the compressibility. Compressibility would be the uh, inverse of the bulk modulus, okay? And we define it as kappa. <laughs> you can see it's inversely proportional to the ambient pressure. So if you have a container <laughs> that, is, uh, that has a certain amount of pressure, like a balloon, Okay, certain amount of pressure in it. If the pressure is high, compressibility is low. You cannot compress it as easily. If the pressure is low, it's easily compressed. You can remember these uh, just through the uh, physical <coughs> reasoning. There are a number of uh, uh, values we can uh, write for speed of sound. Let me uh, give you a couple of bits of information. 
speed of sound, we said, is bulk modulus divided by rho zero, and that's also gamma p zero rho zero. Oops, uh, this is just c, sorry. And uh, one kappa rho zero. Okay. Now, remember pressure a state equation is uh, pressure times uh, 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 R is the gas constant density and temperature <laughs> now what this means is uh, speed of sound once again let me repeat this Speed of sound is dependent on temperature. Okay. But it depends on the square root of the temperature. So as the temperature changes, the speed of sound would also change with its square root. Now, what we have done so far is using the thermodynamic principles show the relationship of how a pressure disturbance would propagate in a medium, okay? That is the speed of sound. How fast it goes depends on the ambient pressure, the density, and temperature of the system. That's what we have done. In fact, in this... Uh, in this chart that I have shown, what we did was uh, use the gas law and related density fluctuations, pressure fluctuations, and we obtained the speed of sound from it. Okay? Now what we want to do is derive the wave equation. Now, to derive the wave equation, we use... the remaining two relationships. One will be the conservation of mass, and the other one will be the uh, force law or Newton's law, okay? Now, first let's talk about equation of continuity. This is also often referred as conservation of mass. <laughs> okay, let's, for the purposes of uh, deriving a very simple relationship, <laughs> use a one-dimensional uh, flow. And uh, let's say this is a cylindrical uh, tube. Cross-sectional area is A. Okay, and uh, if you look at just the cross section and take a volume, okay, volume dV, so it has an elemental length x, so dV is A times dx. Now, flow enters it from one side and that flow In time, in a time period, dt, okay, as the flow is propagating, in a time period dt, the mass 
entering the entering the uh, uh, volume dV, we can write as number one. There is the volume itself, and the uh, amount of mass that enters it will be rho x ux dt ax. Okay. Density, particle velocity, during a given time, times the area. Does that make sense? No problem? <laughs> okay, now. The amount of flow that's leaving the other side. Okay. Mass exiting the right hand side will be <laughs> same area I think I made a minor mistake here could you look up just for a second for this this is not there okay it's just entering not the total volume sorry it's the amount that's entering it okay <laughs> so to write that cleanly would be okay. Now, the mass exiting the right hand side, the right hand side is not x anymore. Okay, it's x plus dx. So we write that as rho x plus dx, the value of velocity. Again, at the new position, time doesn't change and area doesn't change. Sorry, this is a function. Okay, so the new values of density and the new values of uh, particle velocity. The net change in the mass in volume dV then would be a difference of these two. Okay, so um, rho x ux dTa minus rho et x plus dx, velocity at the other end, x plus dx, dTa. And we can express that as the change of mass with respect to within that distance dx. Rho times ux is, of course, the elemental mass. That's the change of it. We can further simplify it by By taking a derivative of rho times ux, and if you do that, you end up with a number of higher order terms and the ambient pressure of rho zero left. Okay. Now, this is the net change of volume 
net change of uh, mass in dV, but the increase in fluid matter can also be expressed through an increase in density. Okay. And what that means is the increase is area times d rho. Okay, and uh, that is okay. So if I take these two equations, I take these two equations. because they both represent the increase in density, either through a spatial change or through a time change. Okay, if I put these together, then I have So to summarize this part, we have a relationship between pressure and particle velocity. Okay? And, and how we arrived at that is using conservation of mass equation as flow goes from one side and exits the other side, it does change, okay, and that change is due to the pressure fluctuation. That's all we have written, okay? Just to review, we have an elemental mass, flow goes in here, but it changes as it propagates an element dx as a result of acoustic pressure fluctuations. And that change is expressed essentially as the uh, how the velocity changes in this distance and how the velocity or density changes in that amount of time, okay? And when you express those together, we end up with a relationship between particle velocity change in that distance and pressure change during that time, okay? So the two elements we, were, we have been talking about are space and the time. Particle velocity change during an elemental space as it travels, during which the pressure change. So this is the uh, conservation of mass or continuity equation. Now, if you just uh, go back again to the same element, you have a pressure here and of course, pressure at the other side, x, x plus dx. <laughs> what does the uh, pressure difference do? It's a net pressure that's acting on the fluid. If you multiply it by the cross-sectional area, it's a net force acting on that elemental fluid. 
And what does a force do? Force causes acceleration. That's all we do right down here, okay? We write the Newton's second law applied basically to this elemental volume. And uh, um, let's see, let's call this the force balance. Again, the area. of the, uh, the uh, cross-sectional area of the uh, fluid column and the pressure difference at two positions, which for small elemental distances we can express as the gradient, gradient of the pressure, the slope of the pressure, times that elemental distance dx. So as dx becomes very, very small, we can say that this difference is the gradient of pressure. Of course, if, <laughs> if pressure is um, increasing with x, then the, uh, then the uh, gradient is positive. If it's decreasing, then it would be negative. So applying Newton's law, What does the force do? As we mentioned a moment ago, the force will accelerate the fluid in the, uh, in the little column. And uh, we express then area, this area times uh, length is the volume, times the density is the mass, and uh, acceleration is dux over dt. <laughs> now, note here, this is a total derivative, okay? It's not a partial derivative as I have been writing all along. <laughs> it's a total derivative. And because particle velocity is a function of both space and time, we need to use the chain rule to make, to express it completely. And that will give us a uh, So substituting back and simplifying, we do have rho del u x over del t, and that would be rho del u x over del t. Okay, <laughs> so we have one more relationship here. Let me, uh, once you write this, draw your attention to this one last uh, equation. Actually, let me just summarize these.
Okay, let me just summarize what I have just written. Okay, because we are now going to use these to finally drive the wave equation. First, from the state equation, we obtained a relationship between pressure and density fluctuations in terms of speed of sound. Okay? Then we had um, force equation. It's also called Euler's equation. and then equation of continuity or conservation of mass gave us This is x. Okay. This is what I wanted to um, talk to you about just for a moment. Any questions so far before we move on? Okay. Heads up just for a moment. This equation here, the last one that we obtained, the force equation, as I mentioned, in the last class, all these equations are supposed to tell you something, okay? What does this one tell you? Let's just think about it for a second. What does this equation tell us? Well, by definition, it says it's a force equation. The left-hand side, del u x over del t, u x is the velocity component, particle velocity component, extraction. And its change with respect to time is acceleration, right? And rho sub zero is the density of the fluid. So this is essentially a force expression, mass, mass times density, or yes, or pressure. And del P, del X is what? It's the gradient of pressure, meaning how pressure changes in a particular distance. This comes up uh, very frequently in modeling acoustics in terms of boundary conditions. See, it is very difficult to measure. Let me just back up for a second. We usually model uh, waves in terms of pressure. We do not use uh, density fluctuations as wave equation. Why? Because it's very difficult to measure density. But it's easy to measure pressure. In air, you use microphone. In water, you use hydrophone, etc. So all our equations, we develop them in terms of pressure because it's easy to measure. Okay. But when it comes to boundary conditions, when something is vibrating, well, you do need the value of pressure on the surface. But that's very difficult to measure also on a surface. Okay. What can you measure on a vibrating surface? Vibration amplitude, and they are what? Velocity, acceleration of the surfaces. So you can see here that acceleration using small accelerometers on surfaces you're able to measure. So this expression comes up quite frequently in boundary conditions. Okay? So what we do is these are the three equations that we have obtained from that original schematic that I had seen that relates uh, just to uh, nail it down uh, well the continuity Newton's law gas law now relates the density fluctuation particle displacement and pressure fluctuation and this cycle or this relate these this this uh, uh, three uh, ex uh, equations that we have obtained are summarized here. <laughs> what we do now is take this last two 
and combine them in such a way to obtain the uh, um, to obtain the uh, wave equation. So to do that, the uh, and since we do want to obtain um, the uh, wave equation in terms of pressure, we'd like to eliminate the. Um, we'd like to eliminate the uh, uh, particle velocity. So this whole equation, we take a derivative with respect to x, and this one, we take a derivative with respect to time. Okay, and if you do that, then you end up with And the second one, again, del square ux. And you can see that these two become equal. And from these, we end up with And that is the wave equation for sound pressure. All this effort just to obtain this. <laughs> okay. And this is, a, of course, you have to keep in mind one dimensional wave equation. <laughs> also, please do keep in mind that all of these equations have been linearized. <laughs> okay? Acoustics basically is nonlinear, okay? but we have linearized these. When is nonlinearity become important? At very high amplitudes of sound, sonic boom, explosions, etc. Then you need to use the higher order terms that we have uh, neglected before. Okay. In three dimensions, you can write this equation, of course, by extending it to or shorter expression is in three dimensions. <clears throat> the Laplacian here can be, it's a divergence of the gradient, can be written in cylindrical, spherical coordinates, which we'll have a chance to do uh, later on. Now, one other thing that I'd like to add to this is the uh, wave equation for velocity potential. And I'll explain why that's important. By the way, this same expression can be written for density fluctuations and particle velocity, okay? Because they're all related to one another. So the same expression can be written for those. One other thing that it can be written for is velocity potential, or phi. And Velocity potential is related to pressure through its time derivative and particle velocity through its 
spatial derivative, meaning del phi over del x if it's only in one direction. Now, this uh, so far concludes the uh, unit one of today uh, because we're able to now uh, determine how to derive the uh, wave equation. And I want to just very quickly summarize before we move on to the uh, next one. Okay, so what we have done is uh, going back to this and... Uh, using this elemental volume. Okay, you see all of these? Yes, sort of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we took the, uh, we consider what happens actually in three dimensions you can do this to. And take a tiny little elemental volume in air. Okay, as pressure waves go through the air, what happens to it? Okay, mass goes through it and because of the change in density, change in velocity, particle velocity, something else exits from it. The difference in changes, whether it's the uh, uh, mass continuity and the forces that are developed uh, through the uh, uh, Newton's law as well as continuity equation, we're able to uh, pull together the uh, wave equation using the gas law. The uh, next uh, uh, unit will cover now what are the solutions and what do we do with the wave equation? Okay, take a two minute break. <laughs>